finest. Mm. Oh. Hey, that's so good. Get it? A coffee lake! Yep. All oh, like the CPU we're reviewing! Yep. Oh, yeah, well, you know what? Thanks for that. And while we're at it, thanks to TunnelBear. TunnelBear makes it easy to privately and securely browse a more open internet. To try TunnelBear for free, go to tunnelbear.com slash LTT. The Core i7-8700K and Core i5-8400 CPUs that we're reviewing today are members of Intel's eighth generation core series, codename Coffee Lake. They're built on the improved 14 nanometer plus plus process, and they fit in the same socket as sixth and seventh gen processors, but for those of you rejoicing in the streets that Intel is supporting the same socket for three generations of desktop chips for the first time in a decade, think again. Neither 8th gen chips nor the 300 series motherboards that go with them are backwards compatible. Trust us, we tried. Intel has an excuse though, at least for the new CPUs to not work in the old boards, because the new Z370 chipset, even though rumors indicate that it's fundamentally a retooled Z270, supports higher speed DDR4-2666 out of the box and offers improved power delivery. Both things that required some tweaks even to hardware. And so, I don't know, like maybe this is a, worth making a video about, like coaching people on how to watch for this stuff because Anyone who was expecting a 200 series board to get a CPU upgrade hasn't been following Intel's pattern over the last 10 years. Now AMD's announced long-term support of AM4 might bring about a change in this behavior from Intel, but that remains to be seen. AMD's history is to, sure, support a socket for a long time, but with CPUs that nobody really wants to upgrade to. With all of that said, I totally get why the people who invested in fancy Z270 boards are mad right now. Architecturally, Coffee Lake is more or less just KB Lake, which itself was more or less just Sky Lake. No AVX 512, no rebalanced smart cache. I mean, damn, we're not even getting a new HD graphics chip. Not that I cared about that. Although, hooray for HDCP 2.2, I guess. So, that doesn't sound very compelling, but what is, is that we are finally getting a six core Intel chip on the mainstream platform and at mainstream prices. But there's more. It's not just a six core chip, which is kind of what I would have expected them to do. The entire Core i7 and Core i5 lineup are getting the hex treatment, complete with additional cache, and this is all at roughly the same TDP as the previous generation. So, if you're upset about that, then I'm glad, because this is a good thing. We all used to get upset about every new hardware generation, but it's okay. Salt can taste good, you know? It's like, oh, oh, mm, like, this is what it feels like when, oh, that's awful. Ah, oh, oh, ah, oh. ah, I gotta get it off my tongue. Why is this even in here? Okay, I'm sorry. So this, this is what it feels like when technology is actually advancing. Just, oh. Now there are new Core i3s too, but those are kind of boring and we didn't get samples, so let's get to performance of the chips that we have. We are gonna be doing a lot of testing this time around because this is potentially a huge single generation leap in performance. So, we cracked open our previous generation Intel rig, our current gen Ryzen, and threw in Core i9 and Threadripper for good measure. So get your yeehaws ready, cause it's gonna be one heck of a shootout. 
And the Core i7-8700K comes out guns blazing. In our 1080p gaming tests, it predictably trades blows at the top of the heap with its predecessor, depending on per-game multi-threaded optimization. Uh, curiously, it seems to fare slightly worse overall, but it's nothing to cry about. More interesting is the Core i5-8400 riding into town with 7700K-like performance at an i5 price. As for our 4K gaming tests, well, these are some super boring, if beautiful, and high resolution graphs. There is a reason that Anthony coined the term the Great Equalizer for 4K in the Core i9 Extreme Edition video. Everything performs the same when the GPU is the bottleneck. Synthetic gaming benchmarks tell a similar story. Moving on to productivity. Oh boy. The Core i7-8700K kills it here, easily surpassing Ryzen in multi-threaded tests and even approaching the Core i9 lineup thanks to its higher core clocks, and it even decisively snatches the single-threaded crown from its predecessor thanks to its higher turbo and extra cash. As for the Core i5-8400, its lack of hyper-threading does hurt it here compared to its competitor, the Ryzen 5 1600. And since Ryzen chips are unlocked, that gap could widen with overclocking. Thermals are not that great for the 8700K, although this seems to be at least partially a firmware bug since when overclocked, we actually got lower readings. And power consumption is higher than the last gen, but nothing like the HEDT and workstation chips that we've been reviewing recently. Let's talk overclocking. It's pretty simple, and there's plenty of fine control, including per core overclocks. At five gigahertz, yes, my friends, five gigahertz, six cores, we managed a pretty decent improvement in performance on our 8700K, giving it similar headroom to our 7700K across the board. Though as always, your mileage may vary. Bringing us to value, and it's here that Coffee Lake shines. When system cost is accounted for, compared to KB Lake, the Core i7-8700K is on par for gaming, so that's good. But at over $100 less than that, the Core i5-8400 is the one that's going to be really disruptive, be it for gamers or entry-level content creators. In productivity, the two actually switch places. The 8700K takes the crown here, while the 8400 sits in the back seat next to Ryzen. Overall though, both of the new Intel chips sit pretty at the top of the pile. So was Coffee Lake a last minute response to Ryzen? In some respects, uh, pricing, not to mention the decision to move the i5 lineup to six core, it might be. We don't know how good Intel's you know, corporate espionage is. You know, maybe they knew Ryzen was gonna be good, a year and a half, two years ago when they would have had to start working on this. Or maybe they didn't. Whatever was the case, this release is a major performance win for the consumer. And you know what else is a win for the consumer? Joining Dollar Shave Club. Thanks for sponsoring this video, you guys. If you haven't already, give Dollar Shave Club a try. It's more than just razors. They make it easy for you to upgrade your shave and your bathroom. You don't actually have to leave the house to get high quality shaving and grooming products delivered straight to your door. And they are basically giving away their sh shower shave starter set to new members for just five bucks. It features the executive razor and three trial size versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean on your face and on your butt. You'll also receive their executive razor, I think I just said that, which includes their premium weighty handle and full cassette of cartridges. Then after the first box, replacement cartridges are just a few bucks a month. So check it out at dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus. We've got that linked below. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it's awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured. It is really highly recommended this time around in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.